What's up, YouTube? This is Justin from Party Rental Knowledge. If you don't know, um, I help start bar party rental companies. I basically help the new guys come in here and figure out stuff and show things to everybody in the party rental world. I like trying trying to get some more videos for the older heads too. So we got an older head, if you don't mind me calling you that, uh, Rob Weinstein here. If you don't know who Rob Weinstein is, he's uh, one of the create or he is the creators or one of the creators of event rental systems. Um, it's actually the service that I use and um, I'm trying to show more of these service providers because if you're serious in this business, you're going to need to look at these guys. So the first one I want you to check out is Rob, Rob Weinstein. So introduce yourself. Well, I introduced you, but go ahead and uh, tell us about yourself, Rob. Give us, yeah. give, how did you start the company for the most part? Yeah. Like, where, Where'd you yeah. come from? So I've got a, a weird past. Um, I grew up in New Orleans where um, it was actually uh, the guy that played Barkley the dog on Sesame Street was coming through and teaching people how to juggle in the schools. And uh, this girl that was babysitting my little brother came over and one evening taught me how to juggle. So I actually learned how to juggle when I was 11. And um, by the time I was 14, I was making a very full-time good living uh, juggling uh, because New Orleans where I grew up has a lot of convention work. So I was, um, you know, working until one in the morning as a juggler in my freshman year in high school. and. Uh, then the World's Fair came in and I became the official juggler for the World's Fair and stuff like that. So, um, uh, you know, over the years, I, I got better. I started competing in juggling competitions. There's um, uh, an organization called the International Jugglers Association. Is You know, there's a niche for everything. So... Uh, okay. Everybody goes, you're in bounce houses? Wow, that's obscure. And I'm like, we have a huge convention in, in Orlando every year, right? So right. Same, same thing happens with the juggling world. And uh, so I, I won the IJA championships uh, back in 86 and uh, toured the country and the world and whatnot a bit. Came back and um, started my first retail store. So I bought my first retail shop. Uh, when I was 21, I felt like, um, you know, if, to make a living on the road full time was very difficult. And uh, and at this point, at the ripe old age of 21, I felt like I had experienced the showbiz world because <laughs> um, I had been doing it for a while at that point. And um, so um, I, it, it's a long convoluted story, but but. In the end, I ended up in Louisiana again. I, I came out to New Mexico in high school. I just followed my parents out here when they moved out here. And that was the first time I experienced the, oh, oh crap, there's like no work here um, because Albuquerque is not a tourist mecca like New Orleans was. So we didn't have the same convention business. We didn't have the corporate gigs that I was used to. And that's how I ended up in that retail kind of environment. Later on, I ended up working for big box retail. I, I opened up the stores back in Louisiana for Target and Cost Plus World Market. And um, while I was doing all that, I kind of became a systems nerd. I, I started, um, I, I read The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber as the one business book that I tell everybody, you have to read this one book. And um, and I, I realized that Target was pulling their inventory out of the back rooms in an inefficient way, and I kind of remodeled their system. Um, so I, I really started embracing this concept of efficiency and systems. And when I decided to move back to Albuquerque, my wife wanted to go to pharmacy school. I decided to go back into business for myself. My next door neighbor rented a bounce house, and I she told me what she paid for it and I went, wow. And just like everybody else, I go, you know, 200 bucks, they work for 30 minutes, right? Of course, I don't, at the time, I didn't realize exactly what was all involved, but um, 
this, you know, this being, I, I skipped over several other companies that I've owned and sold. And <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing the as abbreviated as I can, but at this point I've come to terms with the, uh, the title of serial entrepreneur. I, I've yep. built quite a few businesses over the years, um, sell them and or keep them. And, um, so in the end, uh, I moved back to Albuquerque with four ratty used units, um, that I overpaid for and, um, started a jump business. I went back to a multimedia company that I had previously owned. I was in video production for a while. We were doing promo videos for Delta airlines and some regional commercials, stuff like that. And he said, well, I said, I, I need you to make a logo for me. And, and then I just mentioned in passing, now I got to find a job so I can support my family while I start up this bounce house company. Right. Well, if you don't mind working for the company you used to own, I got stuff falling off my, my desk. Like we have a lot of work and I'm like, great. So I ended up working for the company that I had founded. Um, and during that time we were hiring more programmers. I hired a guy named Corey who ended up being my co-founder for ERS. Um, he wrote the original software just for my company. It was part of my uh, salary compensation as I got some programming time out of our own team. And uh, so he wrote a real basic ordering system for online ordering because I, I went at it for about a month and the, the guy I had sold it to was like, oh yeah, you can answer the phone for your company. I know you're starting it up, no problem. Well, the phone started ringing too much and it became a problem pretty quick. Um, and, and I said, I really need online ordering so that, you know, they get a voicemail that says you can wait until after five when I can return your call or you can place an order right now. And, um, you know, very quickly it was like 60% online ordering and, was, and it was obvious. Was there anything like that at the time when you created no. that? No. So so there wasn't any online ordering at all. What year was it? Oh boy. Uh, Ballpark. 2005, something like that. Yes. Ooh. Oh yeah. Something in that range. And um, now I had had some experience with online ordering already. Um, my, my magic shop that I bought when I was 21, we did 25% of our sales was international mail order. Um, back when you could send um, credit cards straight through email, I mean, everything was unsecure and just horrible by today's standards. But um, uh, so I had had some success with that and I understood the business system involved. And when I got into the um, party rental business, it was pretty standard at that time that nobody, at least in this area, would even publish their prices. They just had pictures and it would say, call for pricing with the thought that I don't want my competition to know my prices. And to which when somebody that, that doesn't come up so often anymore, but when we first started, it still does, I'm, I'm weirdly enough, it yeah. really does still come up. It, it does. Well, it, it actually comes up in your area more than anywhere else in the country of the year. New, New York. York. Yeah, New York. Yeah, actually, yeah, maybe that's why I see it. Not in Buffalo. Buffalo, no. our market's awesome. Right. right. <laughs> so New York City um, and um, every once in a while New Jersey, th those are the last states that are holding out. Um, I actually feel like we changed the industry um, to be more transparent because everybody was like, oh, no, I mean, at one point when I was growing my business, I counted in the yellow pages, we had 65 competitors listed in Albuquerque, which only had 300,000 or 500,000 people at the time. It was, it was a small city with a lot of competition and nobody had their prices listed. I was the first one to do that. And I was just like, I don't understand why everybody thinks there has to be this negotiation, hide it from the, the competition. 
uh, when somebody asks me, you know, well, I don't want my competition to know, I go, do you know your competitors' prices? And they go, yeah. And I said, how did you find that out? Well, I called them. Okay, guess what? They've already True. done that on YouTube, right? Everybody knows everybody's prices. So all you're doing is making it harder for your customer to do business with you. Yeah. So, like reduce the barriers to making a sale, just tell them the price and, and let them make their own decision. I, I, I'm like, I'm not going to get into a price war. If somebody wants to come in and undercut me, fine. I, I'm going to differentiate through better service, better equipment, um, you know, a different way of doing business. Um, in, in our case at the time, just offering online ordering was enough that I was already differentiating. So, um, our business grew very quickly. We became the number one, um, you, you could still be uh, online ordering still differentiates you from the competition today and locally. Like there's, yeah. there's probably at least 10 companies here, 15 there's companies here. And and six, top, yeah. That are yeah, still, like Facebook is it and you don't need a, a website and right. which, you know what, here's the deal. I, it, there's one thing that I'm learning out of, you know, through, through going through this for this many years now is that everybody has their own goals and uh, um, like Willem and the EPA, I know he, he always starts with what are your goals? Um, because that determines how you should approach, um, you know, what, what your business strategy is, right? Like, if I have a job and I want to do party rental um, stuff as a side hustle because I just want to, you know, be able to go on a nicer family vacation, well, a nice family vacation might run you 10 grand. So you need to net 10 grand. And maybe that's your goal. And, that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that um, I, unless your goal is to become wealthy, um, own a company that you don't have to be working in every day, things like that, then taking the side hustle attitude of I'm just going to use Facebook and well, advertising is too expensive. You know, all the, the things that you hear from people that are not growth mindset. Um, so, so you have to decide what you want. Somebody smart once told me not everybody's supposed to be in business. And if yeah. you're watching this right now, you're, you might not be ready for this business. And that's one of the reasons I make this videos. So like and subscribe, but no, yeah. seriously, if um, I make these videos to show you, because not everybody's going to sit there and are, is um, they don't want to go to another company and try it out. They don't want to ask their peers in your area. They don't want to just go in party rental knowledge group and link in this description <laughs> or they don't want to just try and put the knowledge in and try and learn it. So here's yeah. another way to try and show it. It's, but in the end of the day, we can show you and we can lead a horse to the water and it's not going to drink it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just, keel, just keel over yeah. or, you know what I mean? So it's before, cool. Before we started recording, we were talking about how, you know, you can, you can show people stuff and, and talk about, you know, this is what it takes for real growth. And some people that's just not, uh, well, for some people, it's not what they need or even want. Um, you know, I, I think that um, for myself, I would imagine for yourself um, and for, you know, the entrepreneurs that are growing and thinking a little bigger, you know, if you're in a retail position, you might start as a cart boy, but you're going to move up and you're going to become an assistant manager and then a manager and then you're going to be a district manager, right? when I was at target, I would go up to cashiers and go, you know, you're doing a great job. Would you like to be a team leader? And they'd be like, Oh, hell no. No, I like going home and not talking about work. And I'm going, you know, I, I personally have a hard time relating to that, but I have come to a place in life where I go, you know what? Some people don't want the stress. They don't, they're risk adverse. They don't want to do anything crazy. Like they can go to the point of, 
buying five units, maybe even seven units. And, um, and that's their level of risk that they're comfortable with. Right. And you can make some nice side hustle yes. money. With that it, It's a business, right? Yep. Um, but then the people that are like, I want to quit my day job and I want to be able to have nice things and take, you know, be able to eat out and not worry about it. You know, whatever your lifestyle goals are, right? Yep. Then you got to start thinking a little bit bigger, right? And and so my rule of thumb, this is, uh, no, I'm, I like where this is going. Stated in the comments. Go ahead, comment below. But here, here's my rule of thumb. Most people, um, when they're just working with by themselves, or you're not up to employees or anything like that, you're gonna net more, but it's it might be in the 30, 35 percent kind of profit margin range. Yep. Um, when you have employees and you've scaled your business, most people are closer to 25, maybe even 20 percent. So now if you extrapolate that into the math, if you want 40,000 a year, you need to do $200,000 a year in sales. And people that are new to business hear numbers like that and they sometimes get freaked out. Um, and I'm here to say, um, that's common. I, I did $200,000 a year with my little tiny magic shop and you know, for a 21 year old, it was great. I got to buy my first house and whatnot, but I can tell you, I was not living high off the hog. I was barely paying my bills. <laughs> so people, people think a million dollars is a lot of money. What was that? I said, people think a million dollars is a lot of money. Right. And, and in it's the not, business, it's good. It's good. It's more uh, money than I got right now. I'm not going to bullshit. You know what I mean? Right. But it's not a lot of money. They say they say a millionaire in your mindset, what you really think a millionaire is somebody who has like $10 million. That's what. Or more. Yeah. Or more. Mm -hmm. It's true. It's, it's generational wealth is what that is actually. Uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, you can actually generate that yourself. Um, you can generate generational wealth yourself. Yeah. Then I'm talking about 10, 10 million is what they say is, is what's going to last you. And if you die, your uh, family can receive it yeah. for numerous generations. That's what they consider generational. Yeah. So, but if you have a million dollars and you die, you're, you, it's not going to last the next person, let alone, you know what I mean? Pretty oh, much sure. whoever's going to get it. The wrong person gets it, you're screwed. Um, yeah. Unless you invest in a party rental business and some software. Yeah, so yeah. what, what, so you started event rental systems. Yeah. And it kind of just bloomed to where, where it did today. So um, maybe yeah. just talk about some of the features and why you, why you created them. Yeah. So we started real slow, by the way. Um, you know, we went to IAPA and um, we had a, a few people that really liked it and helped us. Um, get the word out and um you know my attitude on on software and sales has always i just i want i like being the good guy i'm the, <laughs> you know i there you could make the argument i i could have become um wealthy faster um uh, by putting the cart in front of the horse there's a lot of people that sell the software um, first, and then they make the features to match what they just sold. Um, I intentionally held back on marketing and, um, we did very slow organic growth because I didn't feel like we were ready to scale, um, for a very long time. Um, and, uh, I, yeah, it was, it was very slow growth. So, you know, research and development. We, we spent years, Corey and I, I mean, Corey um, started up another company um, after ours that, um, you know, went, went huge. It was called La Vue. It was one of the top restaurant point of sale systems in the world. Um, Apple uses it in their own headquarters worldwide. Um, and, um, you know, that, that, 
um, took precedent for him for a while and my jump company was taking precedent for a while and it was just really slow growth. And then when we finally got to the point where, Hey, you know what? Sales are coming in on their own, just word of mouth because our stuff is good. Um, that's when, um, you know, I sold my jump company. Um, he came in like with a vengeance full force on our software development. And, and we started seeing explosive growth because at that point we had the foundation that could support growth. We had a team that could support it. Um, and so for the last five, six years, I think we've been cranking out around 130 new features and updates a year, um, which is incredibly fast for um, software development. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess for viewers, if you haven't seen ERS, uh, just come check it out. We, you know, we can, our, our sales team can show you a demo and stuff like that. And we've got a bunch of videos. I, I don't want to get into a sales pitch for our stuff. No, no, you don't have to at all. There's a, there's a link in the description, everybody, if you want to talk to a sales rep or anything like that. Yeah. Um, Rob, Rob's cool as hell though. We don't got to get into a sales thing. I don't really want to make this too much salesy. I just wanted to show because because you're a guy that's seen it all and like um, that's why I just wanted to show you. Know, obviously, you're going to talk about ERS because you created it. And that's one of the reasons you are for this. You, you're who you are in this industry. You're a person who was a bounce house guy and then went forward and created an entire point of sale system for online ordering. Right, and you're and now you, you you sold that company as well too, but you're just running it because you, you that's how much you love it. Yeah, correct. So yeah, there right. there was some funny rumors going around that uh, you know Corey and I are sticking around just until our contracts are up, and then we're going to take off. I'm like, there are no contracts. We're here because we want to be. Um, and uh, you know, without getting into details, if we didn't want to work, we don't have to at this point. We did, yep. we did fine, right? Um, we're here because we want to be, and and um, exactly. I enjoy the 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 ongoing challenge of software and development. So, like yep. this year, for example, this this is where I'm really proud of our team. Um, you know, COVID hit. Yep. And, everybody's reaction, it didn't matter what software platform you were on, everybody was saying, what are you going to do for me, right? It was kind of like the, you know, the government's going to hand out some money and what are you going to do? You know, nobody should be requiring us to pay. And I'm going, well, here's the deal. Let me, let me spell this out. If we don't get paid, then when COVID is under control, you will have no software, no website, because we'll be out of business just like you will, <laughs> right? Um, so, so this is where I think entrepreneurial spirit and just having a good um, uh, responsive team matters a lot. So the first thing that we did when the when it all hit is we were still thinking this whole thing is only going to last a month. So we said. Um, let's put out some gift cards. We're gonna make some virtual gift cards that really work like a gift card, um, not just a fake item that you put in your inventory, a real gift card with you know, tracking information. In fact, we even went far enough that um, our family entertainment centers could sell the physical gift cards with swipers and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was step one. Then we said, okay, this is going to last longer. So what can we do that'll keep people with trucks moving, right? So we added the grocery delivery app. Super simple, but at the time, you know, if you wanted your groceries delivered from Walmart, it was a two week wait and they could not deliver groceries fast enough. And the, the government had everybody clamped down you weren't supposed to be going anywhere. They didn't want you going to the store. They wanted stuff delivered, right? Yep. So we did the delivery app and we had customers that, um, you know, when, when you throw something out and, and, and you take people that implement the idea and run with it, it's so cool to watch. So mm -hmm. we had some guys that were hitting like seven grand a week in deliveries. 
yeah. filling the box trucks with groceries. And they were absolutely that. supporting their family on straight grocery deliveries for a while, right? Yeah, I saw that in the groups. I was, I was pretty. I was like, "What is going on right here?" Yeah, like, like I was like, "You know what I mean?" Because there's, there's a lot. Of, there was a lot of big companies hurting me. I was just buying everything. Like right. everybody decided they were going to be done. I was just buying stuff. Right. I'm sitting, here, sitting and waiting and trying to. I'm like, I'm sitting here like, why did I just do that? Why, why did I just go spend? Why did I just go spend 15k in Pennsylvania? Right. Like, like what am I? What am I doing right now? And I'm like, but such there was such nice stuff. It's so I'm well, not. I, I was a genius move, honestly. I mean, yeah. all my bad. It was that was I, just. I was growing my company <clears throat> when 2008 crash hit. Right. So, been there, done that. Which is one one thing. If you're watching this, um, of course, it's top of mind right now. But I hope everybody, this is a lesson, which is the big um, events and the, the huge church and school gigs and corporate gigs, uh, they make a lot of money. They're flashy, they're fun. It's exciting to be able to do a $15,000 event. All those things are very cool and they can be very profitable, but you should never give up the backyards because backyards are recession proof. And granted, nobody could have predicted COVID but you can absolutely predict the fact there, I mean, it's just a fact. There will be ebbs and flows with the economy. And, um, you know, I think that there's a decent chance that we're gonna see a downturn economy at the end of all this COVID stuff too. Um, maybe not immediately, maybe a couple of years out, but um, it doesn't matter. The, the answer is if you don't give up the backyard, um, because the backyard stuff is pretty recession proof. What we saw in 2008 is they stopped ordering as many add-ons, but they're still going to provide a birthday party for their kid. Diversify your customer base. Like you would diversify your income. Yep. Yep. That's the smartest move you could possibly do. Everybody that's watching. That's some, that's one of the big, biggest lessons learned for 2020. And that's, uh, that's my opinion. Eight, I saw some huge companies. We had we had some customers even that were doing nothing but touring the country, doing college gigs with inflatables. Right? I mean, they were making really good money. And two thousand eight hit, and I mean, it dried up to nothing. I mean, they went from a lot to nothing, and uh, they had given up the backyard parties, so they had nothing. Where the bigger companies might have taken a 25% hit, but that's that's not the same as a 100% hit, right? Yep. Uh, I, so yeah, diversify it, you know, it's the same thing as stock market, you know. I mean, don't put don't put all your money in the housing market, don't put all your money in the, house, in the stock market, and don't put all your money in the bank, don't put all the money in your business, put them in all three, and then when one fails, yeah. you're gonna like, like have a happy year of the other two. I think you want to be that guy walking around the street with 10 baskets and an egg in each because you don't want them all in one basket. Right. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. for, for us, I mean, I, for, for what it's worth, I, you know, put my money where my mouth is. I, I felt like um, we needed to diversify. So we had actually been doing more dumpster um, rental development, uh, software development. So yeah. that, been a very big growth sector for us. Um, you know, our plan for for 2020 was family entertainment centers. We were totally psyched about. We built this whole new cash register system with um, cool. Uh, oh, I didn't hear this. That was your goal. <coughs> um, that was our 2020 plan, and and our 2019 IAPA. We were out there selling our new point of sale and we were about to kick butt with the thing the we now it's yeah, so bad for the indoor guys man is in point of sale for restaurants right so we come into this and i just assumed that all the companies that were doing software for family entertainment centers you know really had it down turns out they don't so 
Um, if you want a hamburger, um, that's a menu item. If you want a hamburger with cheese, it had to be a separate menu item on some of these systems. And if you want a hamburger with cheese minus pickles, that had to be another item because their system couldn't handle what we call modifiers where you're doing mm. plus cheese minus onions, yeah. pickles, extra ketchup, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So, so we made all that. And then one of the big players in our industry, um, the entire thing, like we want three people bowling, we want two bumper cars and we want a pizza and a pitcher of Coke. The entire order went to the kitchen. So the kitchen staff that's making the pizza and the Coke had to read through all this bowling stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was just really poorly designed. I'm going to name drop something. It's like David Buster's. I don't know if that's around you or anything like that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's is that, is there stuff like that too? Like, is there a system like, um, well, Dave and Buster's just declared bankruptcy. So I'm not sure. What. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. That's sad. <laughs> yeah. COVID. No. COVID dude, I love entertainment. That's like, dude, that's yeah. dude, it's cool. I might go buy, see if I can buy some of their games. <gasps> that's right. Yeah. I don't know if they're reorganizational or what, but uh, I don't think anybody in Buffalo watches my stuff. I'm there. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, no, they do. There's a bunch of them that do. That's what I'm messing with. So what we what we did is um, we made it so that you have a receipt that goes to the customer, but then we had separate kitchen printing that would send the food to the food prep area and drinks to the drink prep area. You know, like a real restaurant. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, really fast, um, great cash register system. And uh, it was perfectly poised to to just take over the family entertainment market, and uh, and then COVID hit, and all the family entertainment centers closed. So this is again why I'm so you know proud of our team. We just said, all right, well, there's activity in dumpsters and junk removal. There's uh, moving companies. There's yard sign rentals. Yard signs. Here because um, so many people aren't having parties, but they are putting up the signs. So we made um, a feature that lets people just type in a custom message and it actually tracks the availability and the color of every letter. And it even simulates a yard sign um, yeah. on the screen. Um, so we've been doing stuff like that. If, we, if, if people don't know, understand what that means, it means you could type in Mississippi and if right. you don't have enough eyes, the one of the one will start coming up red. It'll, it'll tell you, hey, you don't have enough eyes in blue, so you have to change it to a different color. Um, yeah. So our system is tracking all that, and you know you could do it old school and type it in, just like every letter is an inventory item. But um, but by doing this spelling thing, the end user can just type out a message. Um, they don't have to add each letter individually and whatnot. And we have this cool interface to pick colors. It just makes the yard sign industry way better. And nobody else, it's, we're literally the only people that have software for this right now. So um, I'm looking into it for all, for all my viewers. The only reason I haven't got into it is because I'm, I, it's my first year is, is the company let it grow a little bit. Two, it's winter right now. So I've, yeah. I've thought about it experiment there's not even any snow anyways so i could be doing it I honestly maybe we'll have another conversation after this is over but so, what i'm trying to say though is yep. literally these yard signs you could buy the happy birthday just a mm -hmm. package and put that as a hole on there and then get some traction with that and then do that before you go ahead and do the full service and yeah. pay the monthly stuff if you want to get some traction with your customer base and everybody that I, everybody that i've seen it's messed around with it for the most part, like has has done some weird things, and it's, it's pretty. It's going well for them for the most part. Yeah. The um, well, you know. So, I, and I'm I'm very transparent about everything. So oh, I love I'm, it. That's that's what the channel's all about, man. Well, a lot of people, you know, when they like, for example, we do ERSCon. We have our own user conference, right? Unfortunately. Yep. COVID's probably going to wipe that out this year and it'll end up being a virtual thing or something. I don't know. We're, we're, we're still working on that. We have hotels reserved, but I don't expect them to open up in time. 
Um, so, you know, in the past, everybody was like, oh, this is just a money grab for ERS. And I'm like, dude, each year we've lost between 10 and $20,000 on the event. And one year in New Orleans, I lost 70 grand. That was my biggest business misstep ever. <laughs> And everybody's like, well, then why would you do that? There's no way you're doing that at a loss. And I'm like, actually, there is. So here's the reasoning on that kind of thing. And um, the reasoning is if we treat our customers great and we do over-the-top service, um, it keeps them sticky. They don't want to go anywhere, right? So yard signs... Here's the thing. Everybody is going to assume that we're making money on yard signs. I'm literally making zero on the signs. I partnered up with a wholesale sign distributor. They're drop shipping. We make nothing on it. So why would we do it, right? Like, why are we taking the time to build this out? The answer is, if we give you wholesale pricing on signs, you're more likely to stick with us and use our software, right? Yeah. So in the long run, it, you know, I'm always looking for a win-win and, and I, that's a win-win, right? So same thing. Um, I'm just going to talk about the elephant in the room, if you don't mind, because the no, elephant in the room talk is, about it. yeah, we, we were purchased by a merchant service company. Okay. So that's credit cards for those of you who don't know the, the terms. So, <laughs> Um, so everybody's like, you know, the competition is like, well, with us, you can pick whatever you want for your merchant service. And, um, you know, that's going to be their, um, counter to the fact that yep. we are pushing people towards our merchant service. Right. Yep. So, I, and that's, that's fair. <laughs> All right. Here's, here's why I think it's actually, um, not only good, it's a great thing that we did. Um, and the reason why we're still around and doing what we're doing, it's a cool business model. So the company that uh, acquired us is called Full Steam, like Full Steam Ahead. And they have um, a huge investment fund and their goal is to buy as many companies as they can as fast as they can so um, we were one of the first companies that they bought and they have now bought 30 companies um, and i'm very happy to say we are the fastest growing company of all the companies that they've bought and they've bought some pretty big companies um, and here's their business model they find companies that are already profitable doing well that are software as a service. So that's, um, you know, monthly software payments is what everybody does now. Um, that's actually also new to our industry from since when we got into it. In the old days, you'd go to a place like Rentmaster, who's still around, I think, and doing yeah. their thing. But it was like three grand for a license. I don't remember what they were charging. It was a lot. And it was not web-based and it was just on your computer. And if you wanted another license, it costs you that much again. And it, it just didn't make any sense for what I was trying to do. So we went to the, the monthly software as a service model. I think it's a win-win as much as, um, you know, I'm slow to pull the trigger myself on some of those kinds of things. I still like, I subscribe to the Adobe Photoshop premiere package. It's, 50 bucks a month because before you, you'd spend a thousand dollars to get Photoshop or something. I think it was 800 or something for the full Photoshop. But then three years down the road, you weren't getting updates and you had to buy it again. If you wanted the cool new stuff. Um, yeah. Now what I pay annually doesn't come anywhere near what I used to pay for the software development. The software is expensive. I mean, a lot of people think that, you know, you make it once and you sell it again and again and again, you make millions of dollars. And I'm here to tell you my payroll is over a million dollars a year. Payroll is expensive. Programmers are expensive. Um, yep. and, and it takes a lot of, um, you know, time, effort and expense to support it. You know, how we offer tech support for free. Well, 
we're offering it for free, but I've got six people on staff offering tech support. They're not free. So, you know, it's just, it's a business just like any other business. Um, You're running it well though. We all love ERS for sure. No, I think, I think we've got a a cool win-win. So, so here's, here's the deal with the merchant service. We're, we're pushing people into it and why here's the deal. It's not even um, about the profit margins on the merchant service. All merchant services, every single one of them, PayPal included, all of them leave margin in their thing for um, sales reps, for resellers, right? So, um, and I don't know what our competition is doing, so I can't speak for them, but I can tell you that when you got PayPal in the past or you got emc or you got authorized.net we were making money on all of them we were always making money on all of them because they all have Mm -hmm. commitments that they pay every single one of them and um so what we get to do now is because we are the merchant service company is we're not having to split that with a middleman like authorized.net or paypal or whatever so we get more profit out of that. So we can still be competitive. We can give the same rates. We can still do a meter beat guarantee, low price. You can't beat our rates literally, because even if you have, you know, like you, you spent hours grinding that poor sales guy into the ground and you got some great deal. Um, all you have to do is send us a statement. We can still beat it because we are the merchant service, right? Um, but here, here's the rule of thumb. If you're paying around 3%, you got a fine deal. Go about your business. If if you're paying closer to 4%, you're paying too much and it's time to renegotiate, which is what I used to tell everybody before we were owned by a merchant service. It's still true. Um, the numbers haven't changed. And sure enough, if you look at our effective rate, most people end up paying around 3%, right? You know. I think another benefit too is so now you got a problem and they can't, bl- you can't blame it on PayPal and PayPal can't blame it on you because yeah. you guys are both the same thing now. How are you going to blame, how are you going to play ER- ERS on ERS pay? Right. And we really were having some problem with, you know, in the past, we had a, a rep for PayPal that was awesome. The guy was responsive. He knew how to set up our customers really well. They did some reorganizational thing, they got rid of him. We still have somebody, I think, on for our customers, but um, like they consistently have problems now. And now we really are back in this. Well, uh, that's on them. I don't know what their setup problem is. If you know, sometimes they figure it out, and sometimes they don't. And we're like, it's not our software. I don't know how to fix it. Um, Yeah, it's it's sad. And then, and then anybody that thinks that like. Oh, he's just saying he can't fix something. I one of the reasons I like these this these guys ERS a lot. I'm in the ERS users group. Um, I'm in all the groups actually, but but um, literally. So now, um, but no, the ERS users group. You have a problem with your programming, or you got to sit there and rules, or just have a question, or you're lonely, or you know what I mean. You just <laughs> just put. Hey, you know what I mean? Can I get an answer to this? You might get Rob or Leslie and yeah. the, like on their day off on a Sunday at like 10 o'clock at night, their time. Right. And then, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we, it's our, our entire team has been known to chime in as late as like two in the morning on that user. Yeah. And, and um, if you're not with ERS, um, you know, we have a user group on Facebook. It's about 1,600 people, maybe more. I haven't looked recently, but we have a lot of people on there that are very supportive and um, free speech in there. Um, the, it gets kind of wild in there. I feel bad. I get wild in there sometimes. The only thing that <laughs> we ever um, take down is just um, anything that's hate-oriented. Like if, if, 
you, you can have a healthy debate. You can even tell us our software stinks. I hate your new interface. I leave that in there um, because I think it's okay to have free speech and feedback in there. Um, the only thing is, you know, if you call somebody a name or tell them they're stupid, then that'll get taken down. But otherwise, fair game. Um, yep. And um, ask questions, man. That's how we grow as people, and that's how we grow as an industry is sharing knowledge and asking questions. The support in that group for their peers. I, I actually wish more people would just talk general business because often it's kept to the software discussion and. I'm, I think it's a great outlet for people to learn and grow um, in there. So it, it's spread around. There's, there's bounce house operators. There's party rental knowledge group. There's uh, the ERS users group. There's professional renter operators. Those are all great ones for the most part. Million. Um, not going to name anymore. <laughs> but, <laughs> No, but I love I love everybody and what they're what they're doing, man. Like, there's so many people out here trying to help out people, um, regardless if they're getting paid or not, regardless if they're providing a service or not, regardless if they're, you know, what I mean, like, it's just every there's a lot. I'm out here trying to do a service. I'm not getting paid anything yet. Eventually, I want to get paid. You know what I mean? Like, I, everybody wants to get paid. Um, I actually have an affiliate link at the bottom here for ERS. If you click that, I get paid. Um, I don't get paid if you click it, so don't spam it. I get paid if you sign up with ERS. Let's, let's put that out there. Um, but I'm eventually trying to look up, and I want you guys to be able to look at the other uh, services as well that's offer, offered, like IO and BCN, and maybe I'll even get Rep Master on here. Because I do tents and talk about the tent stuff too for all my all my users. and. Some people, you know what I mean? I tell people straight out, those are the three. If you do bounce houses, those are the three you definitely want to look at. And then if you do tents and stuff like that, or just tents, I see a lot of people looking at different, like, like IO has their own thing just for tents, don't they? Or something like that. Like it's, I don't, I don't, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's uh, event office or I think it is. And then Adam, my buddy, Adam, if you don't know who Adam, the tent guy, he's got a YouTube channel. He's got a YouTube thing going on tonight at 930. We could, we're, I'm on there at 9.30 on Tuesdays all the time talking about stuff. But he did an interview with them about that. He says there, there's Good Shuffle. Lee's on Good Shuffle. Um, he used to be with, like, Check Cherry. There's a bunch of little stuff. I'll show everybody some love. But if you're a Balance House guy, there, you want to check out, the, like, those three for the most part. And yeah. It's, and, but, yeah, there's – there's a lot of software out out here for the most part, but it doesn't mean they're all big hitters in the game. It's a yeah, no, there, there's a lot. Um, yeah. Most, <laughs> uh, I'll just say it, yeah. most of them are garbage, but um, but there's there are, yep. um, you know, I, I think that um, most people, all right, so let me, let me go back a step. Yeah. Uh, we are the market leader <laughs> and, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're about five times larger than our closest competitor. So there, there's um, my own little toot the horn. But with that said, um, uh, you know, I'm not into slamming the competition there. IO has good software. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, uh, we, we have different philosophical approaches. Um, I personally like our approach better, but they like their approach better, right? I yep. mean, it's, uh, I, I literally was talking to Rob before I got on this. I'm like, I talked to you guys all because I'm trying to. I, yep. cause everybody, I'm not everybody asks me questions. I'll be because I love talking, being free. Like, so I'll go Sorry. out here and tell everybody to, here too. Everybody comes in my inbox, and you go ahead and go into my inbox and ask me questions. They're like, well, what's the best software? What's the best to go for? And I literally just try and tell them, well, what are your goals? What are yep. your options? What are you trying to achieve as a company? How many how, first? I, at first, the first industry question that anybody will ask you that they're an industry member if you do balance houses is how many balance houses do you have? Right. <laughs> it's the first question um, for the most part, and then like you know what I mean because then you can really gauge what people are thinking because if they if you start talking to somebody and you're like oh what oh my head my head's like hey well you can hear me but I can't hear myself oh, okay. um, but they'll sit. They'll sit there and they'll be like, oh, um, they start talking to you like they own a giant company or something like that. And you find out they only got like five jumps and 
Yeah. You're like, okay, slow down, dude. Like, <laughs> slow yeah. down for a second. We'll figure this out. Do this slowly. Yeah. We'll get a good real game plan. I'll, I'll, I'll give you if, – if you're new to the industry, um, do some research before you start taking advice off of Facebook. At, at one point, there was a um, – I think it might still exist, but there was a moonwalk forum that everybody was into. That was before the days of Facebook. And um, – there were these guys in there talking like they were big shots. Um, you know, oh, I do these paper play events and I make tons of money and da da da. And at one point, I put up a poll and I said, "How many of you have X number of units? X number of units? X number of units?" And it turned out that most of the people that were the most verbal in there had under ten units. And I'm like, "All right, I you gotta." you know, make sure you know where you're getting your advice. Um, Cause we have your customers that own 1200 individual. Yep. Playables, right. Yep. That's the kind of person I want to talk. And to they people. weren't manufacturers either. And not manufacturers. We, we have some, uh, you know, a contrary it's to what some competitors sometimes say, we do have the biggest <laughs> companies in the country. I don't know what the data is. I don't, I know I love, I, like I said, I love BCN. I love ERS. I love IO. Um, I'm trying to shed some more love to the other people because I bet you there's software for like um, just re linen rental and stuff like that. Like if people were in those niches and stuff like that. I don't even, I never um, looked really into this type of stuff, but it's, it's probably out there. Most people in that world are using uh, um, monolithic, um, software package called Point of Rental. Yep, uh, I've heard of Point of Rental. Yeah, um, you know, I I think that um, we really are poised to be able to take over a lot of that market um, because when you, when you start buying them out, um, yeah, <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> with all that with all that extra uh, money from uh, what you call it from merchant uh, services. <laughs> yeah, I, I think our company has already approached them along with quite a few other people you already know. Um, I love it. And um, yeah, so the, the bottom line with, with all this stuff, I, this is, boy, did we go on a tangent there. Yeah, um, we got on a tangent. It's cool. The, the bottom line is uh, the merchant service. We get to take that money. The Our parent company isn't keeping it. They're actually giving it to us to expand with. So you know, we get an extra million dollars or something to uh, put on our bottom line and we use that to hire more people. And now we're up to 18 people, I think, on staff and and uh, we're growing. And, uh, and that doesn't even count the, you know, some of the other company cottage industries that have kind of spawned up to support our customers, right? There's whole other companies that exist just to, build websites and do yeah. SEO and you know, we've got, you know, people inside of our Facebook group that are, you know, making a living um, doing ancillary work for our customers. It's been great to create a whole kind of community environment. It's beautiful, man. It really, this, this industry we need to keep, the reason I do these videos and back to like what you're saying, like you, you want to get your knowledge from somebody who actually knows what they're doing a little bit. And I like going on here and talking because I don't really get shut down to the point where everybody's like, like I'll get corrected and there's, there's ways of, there's 20 different ways of doing things. So it's kind of hard to be wrong when you right. say, when you say some of these things. Right. But like, and then some, like that's another thing I try to show is like different perspectives for different areas. Cause people do different, slightly different things in different areas for different reasons. And I want to show, everybody those different reasons so it's not like you just have to be in buffalo new york to be able to take my advice and that's that's the type of stuff i want to show on the channel but the reason i do this stuff is totally selfish i want cheaper insurance i want but i want cheaper insurance for me and i want cheaper insurance for you it doesn't just work out just for myself and so i gotta lower i'm trying to lower the the bar for the most part i'm not trying to raise the bar i'm trying to lower the bar because that's, uh, that's a whole nother evening of discussions about yep. 
immigrants and stuff like that. Um, well, that's what that's what I'm trying. To, yeah, I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just trying to say that that's the whole goal. This whole conversation is us just not just pushing people to ERS, but trying to push people to online ordering and better services for their businesses, but not only be- better business practices in whole, safer business practices. Um, we're at 55 minutes. I love it, man. I think we're going to cut it short here today. If you yeah. like the video, you know who, uh, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, check out these videos. Um, check out the link in the description. Remember I get paid if you hit any of them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding, but I get, I get, uh, thanks to everybody.